Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to learn how to make a card using office supplies. We're going to use office supply labels. I've got this box here that's probably back from 1996 when I used to work at Radio Shack. Um, just basic uh, labels. As you can see, it's a really, a really old one, so it's got the little holes in the side for feeding through one of those old uh, dot matrix printing things. I don't know if they make this type exactly anymore, but any uh, sheets of labels will work just fine. You can get those at the dollar store or the office supply store, or check your um, supply cabinet at home. You might actually have some labels. So um, uh, you can use them as is, or I actually cut these out so that I would have this nice gradiated pattern so it would match up with the sketch over at, or over at Oriental Stamp Art this week. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So I need five labels. So I'm just going to peel this one off and I'm going to set this aside so I can use it uh, a little bit later. And I'm going to show you how I cut these labels. So what I have here is just a regular cutting mat. It's my score mat. And I'm just going to line it up with one of these black lines here. And just go through with an X-Acto knife. And I'm going to cut through um, this. This one's in the middle. I'm going to leave that one tall. And I'm going to cut through the, the two on each side. One, two, skip one, cut through those two. And then I'm going to slide it down another quarter of an inch. And I'm just going to cut through the two on the end, so I'll end up with that gradiated taper. And I'm going to do the exact same thing to the other side. And after I do that, I'll just remove the unwanted portion of labels. So let me uh, cut the other side, and we'll be back in just a second. Okay, my labels are cut. I'm going to move this uh, mat out of the way and grab my stamp. I am using this panda bear collage from um, About, actually it's more of a motif than a collage from About Art Accents. And I am going to color it up with my brush markers. I am just going to go in with my, going from lightest to darkest, I'm going to add some greens into the bamboo area. Um, you can be pretty quick with this because we're going to go in with chalk and add some more color. So as long as you don't have anything too out of whack, it's going to look fine. And of course, you know, take, take more time. When you're doing this on your own, since I'm doing a video, I do try to like speed it up a little bit so you don't have to sit around and watch me color for an hour. <laughs> I like to try to kind of make it a little quick. Um, and plus it's summer and I'm all about the quick projects in the summer. Using a couple colors from each color family really, um, really make it look nice too. And as far as markers, there's lots of great brands out there. I really like these uh, Momento. I like the Tombow a lot. Um, those are my favorites. The Stampin' Up! ones are really good too. I'm not a huge fan of the Distress Markers because um, sometimes I open them up and I'll have like big globs of ink that have um, situated themselves to the bottom. I'm not exactly sure why that happens, but um, I have found that with the Distress Markers. Uh, maybe it's because I don't use them enough. I don't know. But um, I really have had no trouble with the Tombows and any of those. Um, other markers that I mentioned. I'm adding a little bit of navy blue into the bears. I'm going to add some red into these flowers down here. I like to try different markers though. Um, I'm very tempted when a new supply comes out. I always want to see if it's if it's worth it or not. Um, as frugal as I try to be, I see a sale or I have a coupon and all bets are off. Nobody's perfect, right? <laughs> All right, I'm adding some uh, black on these panda bears. Um, now the labels we're going to stamp onto are kind of slick. We're not going to have to really um, miss these or anything. It's gonna it's gonna stamp pretty well going right onto the uh, right onto the labels. And I think there's a little ball in the back. I'm going to add some red to that. Looks like my fluorescent light just kicked in uh, full strength. <laughs> All right, and I'm just taking a quick peek and making sure that I have everything colored in that I need colored. But I'm not being too picky about it because I can go in with um, with chalk later. All right, now sometimes I, I would usually breathe on this. I don't really think it needs it, but I want to add a little bit more green to those leaves. But, you know, what the heck, I'm just going to hold habits die hard. Now, I'm using a rock -a block stamp mount because my um, stamp here is unmounted and it does not have cushion on it. I just put the uh, sticky on the back so I could stamp it. So by using the, um, the rock -a blocks, I get a really good impression. Let me turn that around right side up so it's right side up for you and zoom in a bit so that you can see my coloring. I am using just some little... 
um, kind of they're, they're just like foam on the end of a stick basically and um, I'm gonna use those to dab on some chalk I've just got these little uh, chocolates by EK Success I've had them forever any sort of chalk that you have is gonna be fine you know pan pastels um, whatever you use is gonna be good and I'm just gonna go in and add some color to what I just stamped and I can go in with a pen later if I need to if I feel like I want to darken it a little bit more I can do that I'm gonna go easy on the black I think the black might end up muddying stuff if I put too much of that in there for my brighter colors here and you can probably hear my kids chitter chattering in the background it is summer quick project time <laughs> And then go with a bigger one, get some blue in the background, so it's kind of a pretty color. Mm. Try not to make it too perfect, because when you when you get fussing about that, then you kind of lose the joy in the project. You know, we're stamping on labels here. It's not a fine art supply. It's not going to perform, um, you know, like your Nina paper. You've got to be very um, willing to just kind of go with the flow and enjoy the unique properties of... Um, of the office supplies because they are not not going to be perfect but that's all right purple back here a little darker purple here well, i think this is a mountain in the background and a little red on those flowers and you'll notice that where you um add chalk over stuff you stamped it's going to be darker on the lines that you stamped because that moisture is going to pick up more chalk and kind of lock it in and make it darker and let's see maybe a little bit more green down there and don't worry about going out of the lines these labels are what's giving us the definition so you know don't don't fret about ending up with you know stuff outside the lines because it's going to be fine trust me I got a little sloppy with the black. I probably would recommend that you don't add uh, add the black. I think you'd probably just be better off to go in with like a pen. Maybe even even your uh, the pen you use to stamp with and just kind of add some detail if you want to. I'm going to do that just because it's just looking a little too loosey-goosey for me. And you could do that at the end too. You don't have to do that now if you want to wait to see what the what it ends up looking like. And some people don't like this kind of sketchy look, so, you know, it's your card. You do what you like. You do what you want. I just felt like I needed a little more definition, and it was too light from where I brushed, used the brush markers. So I am going in and adding that definition right now. I'm just kind of tracing over the lines that, um, that I stamped. And it does kind of give it a little bit of a brush stroke look, too, which I like. But to each his own. You, if you really unhappy with the way it stamped out, you can go ahead and stamp it again. But I'm going to try to rescue this because I like the colors and everything else. It was just the pandas that were a little too light for me. And I can go in and fix that. And I actually may even go in and, and color over that red ball they're playing with in the background. And I also think that it missed a little, little bamboo leaf there. So I'm going to throw that in. So see, it's your card. It's completely up to you um, what you decide to do with it. You don't have to. Uh, you don't have to settle for a poorly stamped image. You can go in there and do whatever you like. Move that a little more room so I can get that to. And when I add a color somewhere, I go in and add it um, other places so I get that kind of color harmony. All right call that good enough it's not perfect but it doesn't need to be it's gonna look great when we're all done I would do want to put a little bit of purple um, out here onto these corners just to kind of finish it up okay so this is where the where the fun comes in um, move out move this stuff out of our way and zoom out a little bit and um, we're going to use contact paper to transfer this. And I recommend clear contact paper because you can see through it. And you can reuse the same piece over and over again. So this is a piece that I've already used. And I'm going to go over this and I'm just going to kind of wipe it off a little bit. I don't want to have too much extra chalk 
around to get stuck to my contact paper because I like to use that over and over again. I know it doesn't look like much now, but trust me, it'll, it'll be pretty cool when we're done. So you just gently have to push it down so that when you peel off your paper, your labels will be stuck to the contact paper and it's going to make it easier to transfer onto our cardstock. I'm feeling very mellow today. This is very weird. I've had like a, I've had several cups of coffee and yet I'm, I feel like I'm being very mellow. Maybe I'm just trying to be quiet so my kids can watch TV on the other end of the basement. It's summer and the living is easy and the kids are watching TV. Okay, so now we have our little motif on the contact paper. So now I need to pick a paper that I want to transfer this onto. Off some of my chalk there. All right, so I like these matte stacks by Dot Kits with a View. I'm not, you know, endorsed by them or anything, but um, I like it because they're all cut to size or cut to size to matte photos. Your traditional four by six photos, but uh, they also work great for getting papers ready to use on a five by seven card. So if I have this flipped over to you, I can actually hold my. Um, my paper down and see if I like that or I could try it on different ones and get just the uh, just the look I'm going for. That's kind of pretty. I think I'll try it on that and I'm gonna um, kind of justify it over to the side a little bit so I have more room for other things on my card. And the cool thing about the contact paper is that you can position your labels and then you can peel up the contact paper and it's not going to damage the paper underneath because it's such a low tack thing. Now see that? So easy. Now I'm going to take this and stick it back on the release paper so that I can um, use it again. Because it actually gets easier to use the more you use it, the more you use it because it loses some of its tack and it makes it really easy. So I'm going to tear this out of the little booklet here, hopefully without ripping it. I think I got two sheets there. And you also get multiples of the same pattern, so um, it's nice. And I have a hard time cutting into a 12 by 12 um, stack of paper, but I don't have as much trouble cutting into a small piece like this. So now the next thing I want to show you how to do is how to do this cool glitter label and this is a technique I learned at the stamp show um, from one of the vendors, the stamp doctor. She, um, well it was the lady at the stamp doctor booth and um, she had a really great tip. This one's not sticky enough to do that with. But what I'm going to do here first is take one of these labels and I'm going to put double sided tape to the back side of it. And then I'm going to stick it on my uh, silicone mat here. So I have the sticky side of the label facing up, all right? It's not, it doesn't want to stick very well because it's a non-stick surface, but I need to be able to peel it off later. Then I'm going to take my uh, stamp here, and I think I'm going to use a happy birthday one, and some ink. I'm going to use some navy ink. And I'm going to stamp happy birthday with the ink on the sticky side of that label. Are you with me so far? Alrighty. Hopefully that's on the label. It looks like it is, so that's good. Alright. Okay, now I want to add a little butterfly to that, I think. I'm just using my fingernails to kind of stick that down. If you don't have fingernails, you could use like the edge of a craft knife or something. That's the only thing. It wants to get stuck to you as much as it does the project. Use a little bit of this red ink and stamp a little butterfly there. Try not to get too much ink on there because it might take a while to dry. Make sure it's right side up here. All right, now look at that. We got that cute little label. Um, and now here's where the fun comes in. Let it dry for a second, but then I'm going to use this clear glitter from Paper Mart, 99 cents a tube. It's awesome, awesome price. Um, they have several colors. I have every color they make, and it's awesome, but the clear is especially awesome because you can do this fun technique. So I'm really coating it with the clear glitter. You cannot put too much on. Let me tell you that right, right now. You want to, the glitter is going to take the stickiness away, and I'm actually even pressing it down into the glitter leftovers here because I want to make sure that it's really, really glittery. Okay, now I need to press this glitter into the paper, into the sticky paper so that it will, um, so that it won't flake off. And so this is my label sheet. I'm using this part here where I took the label off of and I'm just going to rub the back of it with my fingernail. You can use a bone folder, anything you can think of that's really going to shove that glitter onto the paper. And it really shouldn't smudge the ink. I'm using just regular dye base ink. 
You might even be able to use pigment, but I would give it some time to dry if you use a pigment ink. And some people say heating this with a heat gun will also help lock in the glitter. I'm not going to bother with that, but um, you could if you like. And to color this, I'm actually going to bring my chalk out again. And I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to look at my card that I just stuck down here and see what color. I think I'll do green like I did with the other thing. I think green will look nice with that. So I'm going to grab my, grab a couple colors of green on my little sponge here. And I'm going to dab it because it is really going to be dark on there. In fact, I think I'll go with the bigger blender than a lighter shade of green because it's really, uh, it's really dark. <laughs> really shows up well, which is nice. I tried this with ink and I couldn't get the uh, dye ink to, I tried Distress Ink and it just wouldn't dry on top of that glitter. So the chalk colors it really well and it also dries, which is nice. And it, it actually goes on a lot darker than chalk usually does. So I'm just gonna try to blend that in a little bit. I got the dark somewhere, so I need to add the dark elsewhere so that it will look good. Everything is about harmony when you're creating a card. If you want it to be pleasing, think about your harmony of colors. And I'm going to do a little bit of, um, I think just like a light, light, maybe peach. I'm going to use that peach on the um, on the butterfly. I tried red on the one before and I thought that was just too strong of a color. All right. That peach might not be strong enough though. That's pretty light. Oh, there we go. Okay, so this is going to go right on our card. Um, I'm not going to worry about wiping that up because this is going to be stuck into a card base, so <clears throat> so it's not going to get anybody too sticky, I don't think. All right, one more tip I want to share with you here. I want to wrap up this card pretty soon. <clears throat> is to outline our um, our little panels. It'll make the they stand out pretty well on this, but I think it gives it a really nice finished look if we outline. I got a little glob of something on that pen. Who knows what? Probably a little glitter or something. So I'm just going to go very carefully and outline this. You could use a ruler if you want, but I find that the edge of the sticker will give you a pretty good um, good guide. So I'm going to outline every one of these labels, and I'll be back in just a second with the finishing touches. All right, you ready to finish up this card? I sure am. I'm going to grab a uh, just a little length of sparkly thread. This is uh, Madria. Um, it's just like, you know, your quilting... Thread. I guess you do special stitches, but I'm not a quilter, but I the, think it's a quilting supply. And I use this a lot on uh, my Asian cards because I think it just, it keeps with the theme and uh, looks really nice. And let's just give it, make sure we give it a crisscross in the front. Oh my gosh, I'm very uncoordinated right now. Um, let's try that again. Wrap it around. There we go. And I'm just going to tape it to the back. A little double-sided double -sided tape double-sided slurring my speech oh my goodness hopefully none of that shot gets on the front of my card but whatever you get the gist basically just to show you how we make this card so you can try it yourself with any labels you might have oh, oh that's fine all right i'm gonna stick this down here and for just a little embellishment i'm gonna show you what i did i just um I stamped this little label. It's also by About Art Accents. It's kind of like a little medallion and I stamped it with copper and I embossed it in copper and made that a kind of like coin-like embellishment. That's going to go right. I'm going to slide that over so it's not right on my words there. It's going to go right there. And um, there you have it. There is the card. It is very easy to make. You've learned a couple techniques using labels, the glitter technique, and also uh, transferring them all to do like a window pane technique. This is the first card that I made. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can see both of them. Well, that's zooming in. There we go. And I want to thank you so much for watching. I know this is a little bit of a long video, but hopefully you, um, you got something out of it. You learned a thing or two. So uh, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.